Okay, so there. The um, background is in. And the reason why I put the background in first is because when you put in the background, you can figure out what color that these should be. So since the prevailing color of this is purple now, because I, it's a purple cloudy background, what you want to do is you want to influence the colors that you already have, because see how this, it sort of pops out, it doesn't fit, it doesn't look like it's in the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a color and I'm going to put it on overlay, and I'm going to take a purple, I'm going to take the purple of the background, and I'm basically just going to put it over. So now that they're influenced by purple, see how they were this, and now they're this. So now when I pick the color, it's a completely different color than it was before, and now it's slightly influenced by purple. So let's see, do I want to... I like that one. That one gets her done, so I'm just going to merge these layers. So these are this is the new color palette and basically this allows the colors this allows the colors to fit better into the colors that I already have. So since color is influenced by other color, you never want to you never want to just use vivid colors that aren't influenced by the original color that they were. So you see I'm using a different color now for this. We want to do that on a layer below the thing. See, sometimes I forget even how to do my own thing. But we can't have everything, can we? So now I'm putting in the new the color, and this is the new color that now has a better better idea of what's going on in the environment. So this so the color looks more natural with the purple purple clouds that I decided to put in. And when I was putting in the cur purple clouds, I was paying attention to the light source. I was making sure that the light source was consistent. So the light is coming from that direction. And so that's the way you're going to eventually shade it. But notice how the blue, the lighter parts of the clouds are on that side. So just make sure not to make clouds one color. A lot of people don't realize that just because they're clouds doesn't mean that they're not influenced by the color around it as well and the lighting around it as well so what you got to do is you got to make sure that you're paying attention to the light source and how you plug and how you plug in the extra colors so i'm going to be doing the flats and i will see you after a quick time lapse and then we're going to talk about shading which is a doozy <laughs> Okay, so flat colors are in, and as you can see, since we influence the color with these, you can't really, you can, you can, um, you can see how it's influenced, and it's not, and it's not looking dumb. So, I forgot a piece right here, so I'll add that in real quick. There we go. Okay, so now, the next part is shading, and shading is the doozy. Shading is where things get interesting. This is where the, this is where line dynamics and whatnot, it's where, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Alright, so, I already talked about how the light source is coming from this direction. But I'm also, since I'm, since I'm a schmuck and I'm trying to be fancy, I'm trying to add a secondary light source right here. So, like, maybe the, maybe the clouds are coming from some sort of bubbling pot or whatever. So what's going to end up happening is there's going to be the main source of light is going to be on this side of the face. So, like, on this, this side, this side of his body. And then there's going to be a secondary, secondary smaller source of light that's going to be, that's going to be lighting up the bottom of him, bottom of his body right here, which is going to be a more purpley color, and I'll talk more about the secondary light source when I get to rim light, but the important part is that you know that you know where the f primary light source is and where the darkest part is going to be. So over there, 
that's a really bad circle. Over on this side of the body is where the darkest parts are going to be, and over near here is where the lightest parts of the body are going to be. So, that's another thing that people do wrong when they, um, when they're shading, is they forget, is they forget that you can go brighter than the original color that you have. That's why this is the mid-tone. Flat should be the mid-tone, not the brightest color that you ever have. So you can go brighter or lighter. So let's start with the darker colors. And then another thing that's important is you need to start, put your shading layer on top of the line work layer because eventually the line work layer is gonna go away. So what you, you don't want, you don't wanna shade any, everything underneath the line layer. And then all of a sudden when the line layer goes away, it doesn't look like anything. It's like, what is, what, what, what is this? So just be aware what's going on it is okay if not almost important that you shade over the lines on this part so make sure that you're shading over your original lines so that when the line work your beautiful line work that you did before goes away you'll you'll be able to you'll be able to understand what's going on and it won't be just a blob and that's another thing that can go wrong too is your flats can be messed up and when you try and do this your blob thing won't make any sense and then that's bad. So you gotta make sure that you shade. Other important thing is that you stay big and big brush strokes. Don't don't try and like zoom in or don't try and zoom in and be like, Ugh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get those parts. But stay loose because you're just blocking in the biggest parts of the shade right now. So you I was actually not doing a good job of that. I should have kept a bigger brush while I was doing this but yes so just remember that when you're picking darker colors to go down make sure that they become cooler um, yeah you get it you get it so at this shading layer, a lot of things is going to, like, disappear. Like, for example, this eye is going to get all funky. You're not even going to be able to see it anymore for quite a while. It's not... It's going to be weird. But just fear not, because it eventually becomes good again, and then you're able to understand what's going on, and it all goes back, and you'll be able to figure out what's happening. But for now... Be loose. It's okay if your lines look crazy. They're prob they're most likely going to look crazy when I do this part, so. And eventually we're going to remove the line layer, and when I remove the line layer, things are gonna get a little crazy because then we're gonna have to do the blending part and according because of the way I do my style and the way and the way um I remove the line art layer, the blending portion is a big portion of how I do it. So I'm gonna lay in some block shade. I'm gonna put it in another time lapse. I know that some people don't like time lapses in tutorial videos, but really, I explained what I was doing. You're just you're just blocking in shade of the different colors, and make sure that you use both light and darker tones. So eventually, I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to make a lighter color of it, and you'll be able to see that in the time lapse. So just watch out for what I'm doing and. I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, so block shading is now in. So this is just block shading. So as you can see, it's not really detailed. You see it gets really, it gets really, really crazy as you zoom in. And also it doesn't really look like the character. I mean, it sort of looks like the character. You can see the beginnings of a character, but it doesn't really quite look like 
look correct yet. This is where we add in the blending and the detail, and this is where things really get kicking. So, what I like to do is, I still like to have the layer on right now. I will start using this less and less, so I'll start having it on less and less. So, what you want to do is you want to take a nice, soft, big brush, the same one I used for the same one I used for the clouds is what I'm using here, is I'm just going to start picking a color that's really close between the areas and just start and just start blending the layers together as to what color that they were originally were. So this is can be a slow, tedious process because as you can see sometimes things get weird, especially Especially when you don't really know what you're doing, but just try and make the layers as smooth as humanly possible. Now, sometimes there are gradients, there are gradients of color, but then other times there are harsh changes in the color. So you gotta make sure that you know where is where. So like for example, underneath underneath this little shoulder pad here, there's not gonna be a nice faded line. It's gonna be a pretty it's going to be a pretty nice thick line underneath this that's going to represent the shade. And you shouldn't really have any tight L corners like that where you just saw. But you will eventually figure out a rhythm and you will figure out how to correctly blend these things together. So just try and make sure that the color stays in the original spot that you originally put it in because, as you see, it'll bleed over. It'll bleed over. But that's okay, because it'll work out in the end. So, just gradiating. You're basically just turning in the shading that you did into gradients. Now, you don't want to over-blend. Now, there's, there's such a thing as over-blending. You will... With this this layer, when I first try, when I first started using this technique, you would overblend. Like you need to make sure that you don't overblend because you're just you're basically losing detail when you do that. So if you know that a shade is supposed to be really dark, like this one for example, is supposed to be really close and it's not really supposed to blend over that much, then just do that. Just make sure that it's just a little bit of shade, that it's just a tiny gradient, that it doesn't really do much. It's up to you how to gradiate these things. Like, for example, I'm not even going to gradiate that at all because because that's the inset of his eye and it's not going to it's not going to change. It's not going to be different. But over here is a sort of rounded part of his mask. So you're definitely going to do that. Also, as we get as I start blending, you notice I'm going to start zooming in way more because there's no point of zooming out anymore. You got the basic block shade. That's not what you're here for anymore. What you're here for is you're here to you're here to put this in. And also, as you're detailing, I know I'm saying a lot of also's here, but it's very important you understand this part as well. So, I'm going to be switching back and forth between the regular brush and to my regular and to this brush. And basically, I'm going to be doing it really small and to input the lines like even after you've blended everything some of the lines are going to go missing so what I like to do is over the black parts especially on bright parts you need to put a line over it so you see that that line that I just put in you can t now tell where it stops and ends and I'm going to smooth out that line later but as you can see we're basically going over you want to go completely over your your original line art layer because the line art layer like I said is going to go away and if you just and if you just not put the line and if you remove and if you don't color where the line art is you're going to all of a sudden lose where all, where all the lines were so make sure that you indicate where original lines were so as you can see when now that I start zooming this out you can sort of see the start of what I'm trying to do here you can see especially in the mask here since it's about to get since it's in the middle of being shaded so that is that and so blending probably out of all of the sections that I've been doing right now 
are is going to take the longest amount of time out of everything that I've done. But that's okay, because this is where the drawing starts looking like the drawing, and not just, and not just random blocks of shade. So I will see you in a bit. I know I'm doing time lapses, but this is going to be a really, really long video. I mean, the recording that I have right now is an hour long, so I'm just going to have to, we're going to have to cut this. I'm going to have to cut this down into time lapses for this to even make a feasible thing. I'm probably going to have to turn this into a two-part video, but I'll make sure to, turn, to have those two parts up like the next day because two-part videos suck. So I will see you in a bit after I finish some rudimentary blending. Yeah. 